Hi there, Dudley here from GigaBeam, and today I've got TP-Link's mesh snazzily named HX220 mesh systems. TP-Link have very kindly given me three of these to try out, and what I'm going to do today is unbox them, because that's what everybody on YouTube does. I'm going to go through the setup on screen and you can follow that through. I'm going to deploy them around my house. I've been very kindly loaned three of these units so we can give them a good sort of run in the wired and as TP-Link intended wireless mesh configuration. And in this setup I've got three floors in the house. They're concrete between them so they're good for blocking the signal between the floors and I've got neighbours with their own Wi-Fi causing plenty of interference so we can see how they work in an interference environment. And then of course I'm going to speed test it because that's what we all want to know about. So follow me through to the unboxing. Okay here we are with the TP-Link sample product that I've been sent through. It's uh, early 2020 so not all the features have been enabled in the back end of these things but we can at least get to see what the hardware is like and go through a bit of the sockets uh, setup. So first of all we've got the main unit itself and we can just take that out of its plastic wrapping. That. And the actual unit. A little bit bigger than a Rubik's Cube, but still pretty small. Nice discrete colour, should look, look good on any desk that you put it on. So that's the main unit itself. I should just add on the back of this unit we've got three gigabit Ethernet ports, one marked for WAN or LAN, and then two for customer use. There's a power button here or rather a power socket and a reset button. I suppose it should be worth pointing out that on older routers there used to be four Ethernet ports for customers to use but I suppose in this day and age more people are kind of focusing towards wireless and I guess if you needed to and you wanted the extra port it's probably better just to deploy something like an 8 port gigabit switch something like this that could be hidden in a cupboard all the wires out of the way and then this unit could just sit on the desk or on the table or wherever it's going to be put. And the reality is that in a house you're going to want to put at least three or maybe even six of these units around the place. So actually having it more compact and cutting the cost down seems like a good idea. We've also got a WPS button on the front. Uh, it's quite hard to see in the video but we'll take a look and see how that works later on. And then finally within the box you get a uh, standard Ethernet cable and in here we've got the power supply so standard sort of fair and a quick start guide obviously we won't be reading any of that and that's pretty much it okay so what I've done here is I've connected the laptop that I'm using to the TP-Link router and the way I did that was I just went onto the Wi-Fi and TP-Link unit. They very handily put a serial number and a sticker on the bottom of the unit. So I could just put in the Wi-Fi key. It does support WPS as well, but I didn't have much joy using that, so I just went with the key instead. As you can see here, it's on the five gigahertz network. And if we just have a quick look at the setup, what I've done under the connection properties, I've made sure it's a private network. That's really just to make sure that in terms of the um, firewall settings on my laptop I'm not getting any problems there and it's come up with the sort of network channel we're on it's given me an IP address DNS servers and all the rest of it so that's all looking like it's working quite well going on to the web browser I've just put in tp-link wifi.net which is their standard way of connecting and sure enough it's come up with the page so let's just put in the password for now Hopefully good enough. Let's just try that again. So at least we can get onto the page. Okay. No, thank you, Edge. We won't do that. Okay, and off we go. So let's start with our region setting. This is, for anyone who's used TP-Link before, this looks pretty familiar already. So we'll go to UK, time zone London, that's absolutely fine. Internet setup. 
so this is probably the that's most interesting now we've got ap mode and router mode if i go to router mode we can connect it with a vlan which is really handy for me because that's something that i use ppoe dynamic ip static pptp lttp chances are most of us are probably using pppoe put in the username and password i'm going to test that a little bit later and just check to see whether it works with vlans on ppoe and i'll set up a router to do that but for now i'm just going to put it in ap mode so we've got the settings there we go we've got the password which is <laughs> actually says it's low security straight out of the box but never mind and um, band steering if i take that off we can choose the two wi-fi names so that gives you some idea and you can either enable or disable particular frequencies so i'm going to leave it on band steering for now test incredibly we are working so finish that Just let it finish its setup by itself. There we go. So now we can use a TP link ID and a password or register or log in later. I'm not going to do that piece yet. This is where it's going to get interesting when we start doing the uh, ISP side of things to see how this connects through to the system that TP link are working on, which will be coming out around about May, June, nine, uh, sorry, 2022. Not 1922, that. I think quite something. And then we can go to the settings. I'll just take you through some of the settings. So there's our model. We've got one wireless client, that's me. Uh, operation mode. There's other router access points, so clearly you can change that at some point in the future if you need to. Uh, we've got the LAN settings. So DHCP and DHCP server. So we can enable that if you want to make it a router. In my case, because I've set it up as an access point, I'm guessing it's just being a complete uh, wireless bridge. So there are wireless settings, and band steering as we did in the um, uh, wizard setup. WPS, so you can either enable or disable that. Give us a few statistics as well about what's connected. Uh, advanced settings, so let's see about that. I'm guessing most people are not going to be playing around with that unless you want to start sort of changing things like the isolation or the fast roaming, which is a nice feature to have. I think I'm going to enable fast roaming for now and see how that plays out uh, with other devices that we connect in. And then multi SSID, that's quite interesting. So clearly there are other settings you can do on multi ssid might look into that a little bit later i don't want to spend a lot of time on this video um working through how that operates but it will be interesting to see what happens there so the security i don't know if that's something where vlans could come in as well but we'll have a look at that with uh, the guys at tp link later connecting through to the cloud uh here we go we've got a bit about the mesh system so we've got mesh enabled. In the TP-Link guide, it basically says that in order to connect more units together, we just plug a second unit in and then press the WPS button on the main router and then the WPS button on the secondary router. Give it a couple of minutes, they'll link together and then you just move the secondary router to where you want it in the property. So alternatively, I guess we can add a mesh device like this. So that's a pretty cool feature and then within the system tools we've got the time settings which we can play around with and the daylight saving times uh, there is a blue led at the bottom of the router i'm guessing that maybe if you've got one of these in a bedroom you might want to turn this feature off or turn the led off rather during certain hours so that's quite handy uh, we've got firmware updates i'm not going to do that right this minute uh, we can back up and restore our configuration. We can do a scheduled reboot. Um, we can set administrator accounts. Now, what might be quite nice about checking some of these things is it's worth thinking whether or not we should be able to change the administrator username for a different username. So we'll sort of have a look at that and see whether that's a feature that could be brought in at some point. Um, system logs, CWMP settings, and then 
Uh, so that that's going to be the bit that's kind of useful to us is how we make that work with a configuration server or whether we even need to use this or whether there's a proprietary TP link way of doing that straight out of the box. And then SNMP. The one feature that I haven't seen on here is the ability to check the speed of the broadband line. So that may well be something that comes in through the auto configuration service that TP Link are working on, where we can remotely do a speed test. But certainly from the client side, I haven't seen anything that allows us to speed test from the customer's perspective. And that would certainly be a nice feature that we could look at. Okay, well, that's the feature set on this device. In a minute, we'll run a couple of speed checks. Okay, so here we are on the TP-Link website still for the router, and that's the settings where we've got channel 44, channel width of 20 megahertz. I'm not gonna look at the 2.4 gigs, so what I've done is I've disabled band steering for now, so I can actually manually program these settings here. And I've got the Microtech bandwidth test set up, so this is my laptop. The server is an HP workstation with a Xeon, so it should be up to the job of doing reasonable bandwidth speeds. And just looking at now, we're gonna run this, and 20 megahertz, creeping up to 150 megahertz per second, 117, 190, and we're even passing 200 meg on 20 megahertz bandwidth. As you can see on my Wi-Fi analyzer, what I've done here is I've got it set on channel 44. It looks like a clean channel. Clearly this signal is much stronger than you'd have in a normal home environment. But having said that, it's still pretty impressive where we're topping out at around 275 megabits per second on 20 megahertz channel width. So I'm just gonna stop that for a moment. Put this on 40 megahertz bandwidth try and get a bit of a feel for what difference that's going to make. Just give that a second. Just to make sure I've applied that change there. Back to our tests. And have another look. So we'll do another start here. So far, not significantly quicker. Uh, back into 200 megabits per second. When you can see, this is the power of Wi-Fi 6 as well, where uh, on small channels, we're now exceeding 300 meg. Uh, that's just on a 40 megahertz bandwidth with other Wi-Fi's in the area, albeit on different channels. But it looks like we're settling down around about 315 megabits per second. It's now Send that to an 80 megahertz channel width. This is certainly going to be a bit more of a test here because in theory we're going to have a bit more interference from our neighboring systems. Start that test again. So back in the mid 200s, high 200s, 300s. And indeed, we've even passed the 430, 450 meg. And there we are, we've seen 500 megabits per second on a 80 megahertz channel width. I suppose it's also worth pointing out, but for WISPs, this may not be particularly uh, desirable is unlike some of the TP-Link products, it does actually give you the full range of five gigahertz channels. Quite a few of the Wi-Fi 6 products I've seen from TP-Link only go from 36 to 48. They don't include any of the DFS frequencies. But if you're sitting there in band C for most of your deployments, it does look like certainly band B might be something that you might want to consider using. So that's just one test here with a single unit, albeit very close to my PC. So what I'm now gonna try is I'm gonna leave it on 80 megahertz. I'm gonna move this router to a couple of rooms away and put another device in between. Just as a quick uh, additional piece of information, what I've done here is I've added 
mesh device through the web page. I've just literally plugged in another brand new unit, wait a minute for it to settle down, press the WPS button and it found a new mesh device and off we go. So in fact, it was incredibly straightforward to set up. Okay, so this is one of the last tests I'm going to do for the moment. And here we're in mesh mode. So what I've done is I've moved the main access point about two or three rooms away. So there's a good couple of walls between me and then an intermediate mesh unit and my laptop. So in this particular case, the signal is going to be that much weaker because I'm no longer right next to the unit. I'll uh, see if I can bring that up. It's still running at 80 megahertz bandwidth. And I've been running this for a little while now. And it's hovering around about sort of 70 to 90 meg. It's peaking at around about 120 meg. So nothing like as fast as when it's on its own, wired straight in, but still a very respectable score. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you found it useful and I look forward to reading your comments below.